Hey, so welcome back in this is another system design video. So today we're gonna go ahead and uh, design like Uber or something like uh, Uber Eats, as well as I think there's like Lyft and all these other different type of uh, kind of apps like this. Uh, but essentially what you can imagine um, for a lot of these apps is they would have kind of a, an app for the user as well as an app for the driver. It might be the same like app on the app store, but the way they interact with it and the flow and uh, what kind of services they have to interact on the back end might be a little different. Um, but essentially, what we typically want to do is kind of list off our functional requirements. And so what we'd want is some type of map that you're kind of interacting with on the client side, as well as like a, a payment system so that the client can make payments and then the driver uh, that's delivering the meals or delivering them to a destination uh, can receive those payments. Uh, as well as like some sort of like dynamic pricing. So you can imagine with this as well as stuff like when you're booking hotels or flights that the price really fluctuates like in near real time uh, based on the demand or the number of people wanting to travel to different destinations or get different services. And so we kind of want to do this pricing uh, dynamically. Uh, then also we want to be able to like book a ride, a ride as well as um, say we want the driver to be able to accept or decline a particular like delivery or uh, drive them to a particular destination. Okay, and so essentially those are our requirements. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna quickly uh, just implement a very high level design. We won't go too in depth just uh, for your sake and also uh, for me since I'm simply learning. So. I'll add a bunch of links in the description that I've been watching over the last um, couple days just on this particular system design that I really liked. And so you can go ahead and take a peek at those, but this is kind of um, the high level design that I got from those videos and those um, uh, blogs and such. So from here, uh, what you can imagine is that they kind of have two separate flows and they have different dependencies based on if you're the one driving or the one uh, being the user. And so we'll look at kind of the driver side as well as the user side. And so initially, uh, typically what you can imagine here is that you have kind of the client application. And so let's go ahead. And so this is kind of the, just the client side. And so same thing here for the user, you'd have some particular like client application uh, that they were going to going through, through the flow and the UI on the front end. And so with this, typically what you'd have in the middle, and this is basically a, a common pattern that you do for all these system design interviews, is you throw a, a load balancer here so that as the number of drivers and the number of users scales, we can kind of scale the APIs or this backend layer uh, horizontally. And so what's great about this design is then we can basically have um, these two API layers to be scaled independently. So you can imagine that maybe the number of drivers is kind of static based on the location. So say you're in New York City, the number of drivers that might fluctuate throughout the day uh, might not be as much as the fluctuation between the users. So at certain points you might only need say like 10 pods to handle the traffic, but then at certain points you need to have like 40 pods or something like that. So it's great that we can scale uh, this API layer for the user API and the driver API uh, independently. And so from this point on, um, in order to do our actual like, kind of map and payments, uh, for one particular video I watched, what they did is essentially all the map APIs or map services that you can interact with, like Google or one I use for a project, which is uh, Mapbox, uh, that's all kind of handled on the client side. And so we can just throw this here. So this is like the Mapbox uh, service that you would interact with. And this is just an API that you would um, communicate with simply on the client side. And so it's not even touching uh, the API. And so from this point on, what we also want to do is pricing. And the way this works uh, in Stripe is that this also interacts with the client side of the application. So that's a way so that uh, the clients can be able to make payments using Stripe as well as the drivers can receive payments from Stripe. All right, and so from here, um, we're going to want to be able to book rides and accept these rides. 
And so what you can imagine here is we definitely want to be able to store this information um, for say auditing purposes or for like downstream analytics and maybe like a data warehouse and like different BI applications for data analysts to look at. Uh, but we definitely want to be storing uh, some of this information here in a data store. Okay, so this will be our database. And so from here, these will be interacting uh, with this database API so that we can kind of keep up with um, our required schema. So from here, we definitely want to keep track of the drivers as well as the users, and then also kind of the rides themselves. So uh, the kind of columns that you would imagine um, with these would be for the driver, probably something like the name, um, uh, say like their like kind of personal information, like how they get paid and uh, where they live and so forth, um, as well as different connections so that they can be uh, attributed with these particular rides. And so essentially the same thing with the, the user, you could have their uh, name and like location information, uh, as well as different things for their payment and so forth. Um, but I'm just sort on, uh, information for now. I'll, I'll keep it high level, but you can imagine uh, date of birth, stuff like that, that will be stored to identify the particular user. But then for the rides, you might have, say, like the uh, time of the ride, the uh, start, as well as the end destination, and then also maybe uh, the status of the ride. So is it um, waiting or is it, say, in progress or has it already been completed? All right, and so essentially this is what you can imagine being stored in this uh, data store here. All right, and so essentially because we wanna be able to scale this application, um, what you can imagine here is that uh, we want to be able to shard this database, which is basically a way so that we can handle um, different, if one uh, node fails, uh, we can then replicate over to the next data store so, and it also allows us to scale out our reads and writes. So we would shard this uh, probably by either the uh, driver ID or say the uh, user ID and then simply short it by, sort it, sorry, uh, by the timestamp or say the status or something, probably the timestamp. Um, and so from this point on, we have this data store, but we also want to be able to fulfill uh, these requirements here as well. And so for the pricing service, one way I really liked how they designed it is that essentially they had a queue, uh, I guess it's not linked here, but they would have a queue uh, based on kind of the incoming requests uh, for uh, different like uh, rides to different destinations. And so we would have a queue like a Kafka cluster, uh, which is a great robust way to store the information as well as be able to publish and subscribe to this particular queue. And so it's basically a way so we can decouple our application and simply say, okay, these are the in real time rides and the past rides uh, or recently past rides uh, that are requesting a driver. And so with this, this would feed into what's known as like Spark. And this is a lot what I do on a daily basis actually. And so what Spark is good at is for different analytics. Um, and so we can do this kind of uh, analytics and so typically what this is great for is both in batch workloads and also uh, real-time workloads you can also do in kafka but not as well there's also something like called apache flink uh, which you can take a look at as well uh, but typically sparks the most popular and it can do near real-time uh, data processing at scale and so essentially this is a great way for us to populate uh, the different pricing based on the number of users requesting it, kind of the current going rate, and different parameters that they'll be looking at to establish what the price would be. And so we'd store that information of that price in a Redis data store. And so our, uh, basically, our API here uh, for this pricing application would then be kind of pulling this information uh, from this Redis data store based on the uh, real-time requests uh, for the uh, rides. All right, so that's kind of how we would handle the pricing. Um, and so from this point on, we'd also want to be able to wait to kind of match and schedule uh, these drivers and uh, the riders. And so that would be a separate API. 
And so essentially what you can imagine is that with this, this would be another API layer where it would then also be able to kind of publish the information uh, to this data store so that we can fulfill kind of that uh, ride schema. And so what this does is it would do a lookup and I'm not going to go too far into it. There's other videos online that talk about like uh, geospatial indexing, uh, which I definitely have not and unlikely anytime soon we'll be looking at uh, how this is done at Uber, but it's essentially how Uber is able to kind of split up uh, the map of the world in different places um, using kind of like a, I think it's hexagon uh, shape here. And so typically I would kind of think about things in a grid, but they found it much better to split up the world in hexagons and just been a, it's a much more performant way to um, essentially index the location of these drivers um, quickly. And so this is a way so that we can basically uh, find matches for the uh, particular driver that's closest to you. Uh, one thing I watched a long time ago was that you don't want to just consider the drivers that are available and near the uh, rider or the user. You also want to consider the drivers that are currently driving someone else but are almost finished their drive or their commute uh, for that particular person. Because say if the destination that they're dropping that person off at is like right near where the user is requesting a, a driver, um, it might actually be faster to request a driver that's almost done their current commute rather than just look at what drivers are available in proximity. All right, and so from this point on, uh, with this kind of matching algorithm, this could be like a whole other separate uh, service here too. Uh, it would then kind of communicate with this driver um, API here, and it would then say, okay, do you want to accept or do you want to decline um, this particular ride? And so that would then kind of return a response to this API, uh, letting them know, okay, has the driver um, accepted or declined this current ride? And then it can then notify the particular uh, user here through its API. Now what you can imagine is that finally, like there is a lot going on here and there's definitely a lot of kind of like zigzags and crisscrosses because everyone's communicating with everything. And so typically what you would have is some particular uh, event bus, same thing with Kafka. And so this is a great way. So it can uh, allow you uh, to have multiple uh, basically they have in Kafka, like something called uh, topics. So topic one, then you might have topic two. Feel free to take a look at these, but these are essentially kind of independent queues. It doesn't have to be just one big queue of different topics or different things that um, different services and are publishing and subscribing to. And so this allows you to have different uh, applications, both publishing and subscribing to these particular queues. And so it's just a better way to uh, decouple the whole application, not have all those different lines of communications over the network um, happening all at once. So it's just a better way to scale that communication um, at scale. So yeah, I think I'll stop here for now. Um, feel free to look at uh, different resources that I use to come up with this today. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and good luck with the rest of your preparation. See ya.